The National Toxicology Program is part of the Public Health Service, in partnership with the CDC, FDA, and NIH, dedicated to the analysis of agents of concern to identify any toxic effects. How did the medical community respond to the draft conclusions in a recent systematic review that concluded that fluoride is to be presumed to be a cognitive neurodevelopmental hazard to humans based on studies showing lower IQ scores among kids with higher fluoride exposure? What do you do when current research contradicts public practices, when new evidence doesn't conform with existing beliefs? Well, health authorities have continued to conclude that fluoride is unequivocally safe despite the new studies in recent years linking fluoride exposure in pregnancy with adverse effects on fetal brain development, there are still papers on how to sell fluoridation of the water supply, targeting social media and the person-to-person -person spread of fluoride misinformation. Search engines are to be encouraged, at the very least, to flag search engine results that point to water fluoridation health misinformation suggesting adverse effects. In promoting support for community water fluoridation, maybe we don't even want to proclaim its safety for fear of raising questions about risks. I mean, if you're saying it's safe, then that begs the question, well, is it not safe? Maybe we shouldn't even talk about whether it's safe. The tendency to ignore new evidence that does not conform to widespread beliefs may be impeding our response to early warnings about fluoride as a potential developmental neurotoxin. But some are just so fixed in their views on fluoridation that they won't reassess their stance no matter what the latest research might show. Ironically, it was the anti-fluoridationists who were accused of their anti-scientific attitudes, but now it's the pro-fluoridationists. One of the most facile pro-fluoridation arguments I ran across is the suggestion that fluoride can't be hurting IQs, because over the last half century of fluoridation, IQ scores have been going up rather than down. The jaw-dropping irony is that a substantial part of that rise may have been due to the removal of another neurotoxic element, lead. It's worth remembering that the science surrounding the neurodevelopmental hazard of low-level lead exposure was also bitterly contested using the same kind of arguments we see today in the fluoridation debate. A few short years before leaded gas was effectively banned in the United States, a meta-analysis of lead exposure and child IQ only found 24 human studies, all cross-sectional, with a typical associated loss of intelligence of about 4 IQ points. The current data suggests a similar IQ loss from fluoride from an even stronger body of evidence. A spokesperson for the American Dental Association responded to the new data, pointing out that some cities that have ended water fluoridation saw an increase in cavities. OK, but that's kind of a strange response to data suggesting the potential for permanent brain damage in children. I mean. I know they're the Dental Association, but how could they so easily ignore the serious red flags of potential neurotoxicity for cavity reduction? Uh, this is not to say tooth decay isn't a serious health issue, but there are ways to get the cavity-preventing benefits of fluoride without the risks. Since the primary benefits arise from topical contact with our enamel, but the primary risk arise from systemic absorption, we can follow Europe's example and safely reap the rewards using fluoride toothpaste and mouthwashes. In Europe, 98% of the population drink unfluoridated water. Uh, several countries, including France, Germany, the Netherlands, Denmark, Sweden, banned fluoridation decades ago in favor of fluoride toothpaste. As more than 10 years ago, the official Scientific Committee on Health Risks of the European Union concluded that topical application of fluoride is most effective in preventing tooth decay, and there appears to be no obvious advantage in favor of fluoridating the water supply.